to the final episode of the Going Pro series. This is a series in which I break down the transition from home brewer to craft brewing on a commercial scale, actually brewing beer for a living. Um, and the transition that I made from my hobby into uh, now my now my job in form of employment. So anyway, the first episode, we walked through just a quick sort of terms, terms definitions and job types and stuff on that line. So you sort of have some context as to what different things mean when you're looking at job descriptions or whatnot. Um, and then we moved into last week's episode, which was more of a um, breakdown of what to expect on a daily basis working at a at a craft establishment, um, just sort of things mentally and physically to be prepared for, and some differences and similarities between home brewing and commercial brewing. And so if you're interested in any of that, go and get, give those videos a look. I'll link them up here. Um, so today, the focus is on how do you actually go about getting a job? The first thing I, I should say is that and I, and I think I've iterated this in some of the earlier episodes, but the craft beer industry is like a lot of um, industries in the regard that one of the more important aspects is to make sure that you're sort of earning your keep or earning your salt or however you want to say it um, by working your way up through the industry. But you really need to be aware of that and enthusiastic about working at entry level positions where you can uh, prove your reliability, prove your capacity to learn, prove your work ethic, and so on and so forth. And so that is just definitely something to keep in the back of your mind as you're going through a job search, potentially. The first thing that I would say is, is um, you need to sort of consider that there's a lot of variability in the craft beer industry at large. There's everything from tiny little microbreweries that have like one, two, three people that are running the show and all the way up to quasi macro beers like your Sierra Nevadas, your Boston Beer Company, you know, Dogfish Head, that kind of a situation um, and everything in between. And so you really need to sort of hone in on like what kind of a craft beer business you want to be a part of. And a lot of those have um, benefits and drawbacks depending on um, depending on what you're looking for. So that's something to identify at first. But, but sort of above that, I would say the first thing to start looking at is places in your local area. Watering holes, places that you go to, places that you appreciate their beer, you appreciate the vibe, you appreciate what they stand for as a company. Um, that's going to Trump everything that you can gather online from uh, from a job description or a job board or something like that. So I would highly stress to focus on your local stuff because there's so many craft breweries out there nowadays and, um, and you never know who's looking for help and when they're looking for it. So I would keep my ear to the ground with that and you could do that by looking at people's websites, looking at um, job boards and focusing on your local area. Anyway, look local first. Don't go and talk to the bartender at the tasting room and ask for a job. They, they're they there doing their job. They're not the people that are responsible for the most part for, um, usually not the people responsible for hiring or anything like that. So um, just, I would either go to the website and sometimes they have a jobs um, page on their website and I would concentrate on looking at that first and see when they post things or there's like general inquiry inquiries or um, you know maybe there's some description descriptors of people's titles in the company and maybe there's somebody who's responsible for hiring and that kind of a thing. So I would just try to get some contact information online and email the the, the necessary people and just just inquire about potential openings or potential opportunities. And um, that's one way to go about it for sure. The other way is to look at a job board like Brewbound. And Brewbound covers the gamut of um, craft beer employment all the way from marketing and engineering and development and like that kind of a thing all the way down to like, you know, assistant brewer, cellarman, that kind of a thing. So uh, you just sort of have to filter your results for what kind of a job you want. And as a, as a home brewer making the transition, I would be looking at assistant jobs. So like assistant brewer, um, assistant sellerman, uh, assistant uh, packaging, um, something along those lines, because generally those have um, fewer required years of experience and they're generally expecting that somebody's going to come in and they're going to train them 
So look for those kinds of keywords, willing to train, um, limited experience, you know what I mean? Like that kind of a thing. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit more open. Um, they're going to be a little bit more open to to taking somebody who doesn't have any resume that's associated with the industry. And then once you've sort of narrowed your search and you're, and you're, you're looking to apply, when you're writing your cover letters or make, writing your resumes or whatever, like you really need to harp on the fact that you're a passionate home brewer because that's gonna resonate with a lot of people. Almost, there's, all, there's a very, very, very good chance that whoever you're writing the email to either the president of the company or the founder or the head brewer or whoever is going to have been a home brewer or is a home brewer. And so there, there's, there's definitely like they on like the passion piece of it is super important. So the fact that you can demonstrate that you're super passionate about the craft of um, brewing beer then, and not, it's just not just another job or something to, that you can like tell your friends you work at a brewery or whatever, if you're actually truly passionate about beer craft beer and beer culture and producing a an exceptional product and everything that comes along with that the reason why we all love this hobby um if you can get that to show in your resume or your cover letter or whatever you're um sending in your email that's going to go a long way and in when if you're lucky enough to get an interview or um, go for a visit or whatever you definitely want to just just be your enthusiastic self in that regard because it will carry some weight for sure. Um, I know that at our company, um, it was I it was something that um, they were they were super stoked on the fact that I was really passionate about it. They could see that and um, they were willing to take a chance on me even though I didn't have any experience, especially for the role that I'm doing now. Generally, the people who have the kind of responsibility that I have have been working in the industry for years in order to gain that. But they took a chance. They saw that I was had a big appetite for digesting and processing information and and I was learning quickly. And so they just kept feeding it to me and now I'm basically running the cellar. So um, don't don't shy away from that and just know as we talked about in my in the previous video, the previous episode that um, uh, it is gonna be a bit of a shock to the system right off the bat because there's a lot of things that are different. Uh, so, but you, you just stick with it and it all settles eventually because it's, it's brewing beer and there's some similarities for sure. Another thing, when you go for your interview or your visit or whatnot, make sure that you ask a lot of questions about the history of the company, the way that the company operates, um, sort of what their philosophy is, the story behind, you know, who founded it. And just be curious about the business itself because it'll unearth a lot of things about like who the people are, what they stand for, what the vibe is, like that kind of a thing. So don't just be there like soaking information and not like trying to ask questions and divert the conversation in ways that you think are going to be helpful to understand because you also are sort of shopping in the in the regard that like they are wanting to hire somebody but you also are trying to figure out if this is going to be a good fit for you and what your goals are so um just keep that in mind as well those are some important things to keep in mind that you need to don't be talking i would focus local first focus on what you know then i would be looking at the size of the breweries that you want to be at you want to be really big like you know 60 60 90 plus barrel systems are you looking at like five barrel ten barrel systems um as far as brew house size um and size of the company um and then and then looking at entry entry level positions positions that don't require a ton of experience and knowing that you're just going to need to prove your worth and then you're going to be able to float around and work your way to the positions that you want to be a part of because not a lot of people are going to want to take a risk on somebody who hasn't worked in the industry and throw them into like a shift brewer role or somebody who or like a like a lead sellerman role like somebody who like a position that holds a lot of weight and responsibility because on their end if it goes bad for them or you can't handle it then you know so they're, they're just trying to do what's best for the company so just be aware of the fact that working your way up from the bottom of the ladder is what you're going to end up having to do and and um and so look for those positions that are towards the bottom of the ladder and then when you've made your decisions as far as what you're going to apply to, make sure that you really are pushing the fact that you 
you have some homebrewing chops, you're really passionate about the industry and about craft beer in general, you're not just doing it because it, you think it would be look cool for your friends or it would look cool or it would be cool to work at a brewery, you actually have a passion for the craft. And that will go a long way to separate you out from a lot of other people and might put you ahead of some people who have just been in the industry for a long time but don't actually have a huge passion for it. It's just another job for them. So um, yeah. And just be open to learn and know that it's going to be overwhelming at first, but it's a super cool experience to be on the other side of the on the other side of the glass, so to speak, and be able to see how the sausage is made and and take some of those tools and bring it back to your home brewing side of things is super awesome. So um, yeah, let me know if I left anything out. Let me know if you've worked in the industry for a long time or you haven't or you're thinking about working in the industry, your comments, your concerns, your questions with the series. Was there anything I missed? Was there anything that I that I really should have talked about that I didn't? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Um, and with that, I think that's gonna conclude the series on going professional or going pro, how I made the transition from a home brewer to now working at a craft local craft brewery. Um, I hope that shed some light for a lot of people out there who were in the same boat as me and wanted to make the transition and didn't have any information really or any way of knowing whether they were doing it right or wrong. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll be getting back to our regularly scheduled content with, I've got some grain to glass videos coming up. I've got some unboxing videos coming up. I've got some gear videos. Um, so um, yeah, we got a lot coming down the pipe. Let me know if there's anything you guys wanna see in particular. And uh, as always, um, I will see you next time and prost.